Beyond color correction, we can apply further enhancements to our images using visual effects. Now, I would advise that you use these sparingly. Use them only on key shots to get across key ideas. But when you've got some distracting elements in your shots or whatever, and you want to direct your viewer's attention even more to a specific part of the screen, visual effects can be really useful. So let's take a look at how to apply a visual effect in HitFilm Express. So first thing we need to do is take the shot we want to apply the effect to, and we need to right click and make composite shot. Press OK. And that opens the clip, the raw media in the compositor. And you'll see that it's lost the color correction that we just did earlier. But if we go back to the editor, the color correction is still applied under controls and effects. It's still here. So we don't need to worry about adding the color correction again or anything in the compositor. Any changes we make in here will be applied to the editor with the color correction on top. OK, so let's go back to the compositor. First thing we're going to do is right click on the clip and we're going to duplicate it. Now what we're going to do is take the top layer and select an ellipse mask here. Now we're going to click and drag and just put it down. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly how you need it. We can adjust it in a little bit. Uh, if I click and drag again, it makes another mask. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to select that second one and delete it. So with the mask selected, we can twill down the options for it and open transform. So there's another transform down here that changes the uh, transform properties for the whole video clip that will kind of move it around and change its scale and stuff. But the transform properties under mask will just apply to the shape and uh, size and scale of the mask, etc. So let's just fine tune its position a little bit. So I'm going to move it on the X axis a little bit. And maybe I'll move it up. And using the scale, you'll see at the moment, doing one or other of the scales will change um, the scale on both axes. So if I just undo that a couple of times, and I unlink X and Y, now I can squish it around, kind of really fine tune exactly where we see it. So I'm going to put it around there. We can always come back to this later to make further changes. So what does the mask do? Well, if we make the bottom layer invisible, you'll see that the mask is telling the top layer only use information within that ellipse mask. And what this means is if we turn on the bottom layer again, any changes we make to the bottom layer will be visible outside the mask. As it stands, we've not made any changes to either top or bottom clip, so there's no visual change in what we see. But let's take the bottom clip and add an effect. Let's go to effects, go back to color correction. We're going to use brightness contrast bring that down onto that second layer. It's not quite like the editor. You don't get like a visual confirmation that you're hovering over, hovering over it correctly or anything. But if you just drop that there, it does appear. Um, so let, let's open up the controls for the brightness contrast. And instead of a slider, you just get a number. But you can still click and drag or enter, enter it manually. Um, so let's just reduce the outside brightness. And you, you'll see that this doesn't look so great at the moment because we can see the edge of our mask here. But we're just getting an idea for the level of darkness that we want around there to really draw our attention in to, to what's going on in the, in the main part or the most important part of the shot. We can also reduce the distractibility of this kind of really useless section of the screen. It's really taking up a lot of real estate here and there's no useful information in there. So we can just darken that out and kind of direct people's eyes towards these uh, three main subjects. So once we've done that, we can now smooth out this transition here. So let's go back to our mask on our top layer, and we're going to open the shape controls instead of the transform. And under feather, feather strength here, we can feather that edge quite significantly. So I'm going to put in a few hundred pixels here maybe 170 or so. And then I just click on the clip itself to get, get rid of that blue bounding box around the mask. Just click away to see how much I like that. I think it just needs a little bit more. 
really smooth that out. Now if we continue adjusting the brightness, we can see the effect that it has. I'd say that's too much, but if we go back to the edit editor, with the um, color correction applied, you can see that's really um, quite severe. So I'm going to go back to the comp compositor here. I'm going to take that back to around 70, minus 17 where it was before. I think that was a good amount. Go back to the editor. And there you can see we've really kind of dropped out the surrounding areas and it draws your eyes towards the three main subjects. Okay, so that's one way you can add a visual effect. This is called a, a vignette. Let's see another way we can add a visual effect in Film Express. So I think we drastically improved the quality of this shot with uh, color correction, but I'd say it's almost too detailed now. Your eyes don't actually know exactly where to look. So again, we can apply a different type of effect by selecting the clip, right clicking, and we're gonna make composite shot. Press OK. And again, we've lost our color correction, but don't worry, that's all applied on the main editor on the clip. So we don't need to worry about color correcting within the compositor itself. Again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take um, the bottom clip and I'm going to go to the blur folder under effects. I'm just gonna put a standard blur on the bottom. I'm going to make the top layer invisible just for a moment just so I can see the blur effect that we've applied to the bottom one. And I think that's pretty good. We can change the radius of the blur to make it more blurry if we need to. But at the moment, I'm just gonna keep it at the default 7.5. Let's turn on the top clip, open up its options. And again, we're going to select a mask, but this time I'm going to use the rectangular mask, which is just above the ellipse mask. And I'd, again, just draw on the middle of the screen. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now let's open up the options for the mask in the top layer. When you apply that mask, you need to make sure that you've got the top layer selected, otherwise you're going to apply the mask underneath. Um, but if you do it incorrectly, you can always just delete the mask and apply it again. Okay, so let's adjust the mask. Let's open up the transform properties for the mask itself. And again, I'm just going to fine tune exactly where I want it. I want to unlink the scale and I'm going to increase the width beyond the edges of the frame. It doesn't really matter how much it goes over, just so long as it's over. And maybe I'll make it a little bit taller as well, maybe something like that. And I'm just going to bring it up on the Y axis a little bit, just move the position like that. Okay, so if I just click on the clip here, you now we, again we can see this hard line where our mask begins. We're telling the mask to keep everything in from the top clip within the, the uh, rectangle of that mask. So let's go to, let's close our transform options and open our mask shape options and we're going to increase the feather again by a substantial amount. Let's give it a good few hundred pixels and let's head over to the editor and just take a look at how that looks. And you can see what we're doing, we're drawing our viewer's attention towards the middle of the screen and also then beyond the channel there and towards the channel islands. I'd say it's a little bit too severe. We've lost a lot of information from the bottom here, although it's looking quite nice. So let's go back to the compositor and just fine tune the transform properties of that mask. Uh, so let's select the transform properties. What I'm going to do is I like the islands being sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the scale or the whoops of the rectangle on the y-axis here. And then using position, I'm just going to move that down again. So I've increased the height and I'll just budget down and then maybe it's a little too much, so I'm just going to narrow it again and move it up. And then let's have a look at the main editor. I think that's much better. We get more detail in the foreground, but yet we are really kind of directing our viewers' eyes towards uh, what's relevant or what's most interesting in the picture. Um, and again, if we compare that, 
I really like this shot without any visual effects applied, but it is a little bit too much, whereas this kind of says, actually, look at this area and look at the islands in the background as well.